So the first segment is ileal reservoir that is new bladders created purely out of ileum. These are cami 1, cami 2. We have the orthotopic cock ileal reservoir or the hemicock. Now we talk about various orthotopic new bladders by their names. So the first segment is ileal reservoir that is new bladders created purely out of ileum. These are cami 1, cami 2. We have the orthotopic cock ileal reservoir or the hemicock. Four important ileal new bladders that I want you to remember are the goneme, the goneme new bladder, the hotman's pouch, the studer's pouch and the Padua pouch which is also called as VIP pouch and there is another that is called as T pouch modification. So there are four that I want you to remember the gonim pouch, the VIP pouch, the studer's pouch and the hotman's pouch as ileal new bladders. I have summarized these new bladders in a table. You can go through it if required but usually questions are not asked about details of these uh, pouches. A few questions that may be asked are highlighted that goneme pouch which is after Ebol, Anim and goneme these are uh, surgeons uh, from the uh, Egypt, uh, from Egypt who have devised this new bladder. It uses only a 40 centimeter segment of the ileum which is quite, uh, quite a small segment for a new bladder. They fold it in a W form and the ureters are implanted by extra mural serosa line tunnels which is an important uh, anti-refluxing mechanism. The advantages of the goneme is that it uses a short ileal segment. It is very easy to make. No staples are used and therefore staple associated complications such as stone formation are less and it has a durable anti-reflux mechanism. Whereas when we talk about the cons of, of the goneme pouch, you must remember that because it is using a extra mural serosa line tunnel, you cannot use dilated ureters for this because the this tunnel, the extra mural serosa line tunnel is not very capacious. First of all, cannot be done for dilated ureters. Secondly, you require fairly long ureters and therefore it cannot be done in ureteric segments that are small that maybe had been cut because of uh, reduced vascularity of the terminal end or involvement by the disease process. And finally, because of the anti-refluxing mechanism, there may be chances of ureteroentric anastomotic strictures. The Hotman bladder uses 70 centimeters. Uh, the point that is asked about Hotman's is that because of its large initial capacity, the return of continence is higher in these individuals. But at the same time, because it, it is continent initially, their chances of late retention are also more because it uses larger segments of the ileum, metabolic abnormalities are higher. Studer has introduced uh, his uh, uh, modification of the Hotman new bladder where they have created a 15 centimeter afferent limb. So you have a new bladder but there is an afferent limb which is 15 centimeter and the, in this the ureters are reimplanted. So the advantage is that it gives you this segment of the ileum in the afferent limb that can help bridge the gap for smaller ureters and because of this segment the reflux into the upper tract is reduced. So now we have completed the pure ileal new bladders and I wanted you to remember four. So the ileal new bladders were the first was Gonim, the second was Hotman, the third was Tudor and finally the latest addition in the uh, latest Campbell was the VIP pouch or the Padua pouch. We come to the next is the hybrid using ileal and colonic segments of this you must remember the mains 3 pouch. And finally, there may be pure colonic new bladders, which are the redis pouch or the right colonic pouches. Just the name is sufficient. I have summarized it in a table so that it can be used as a ready reckoner. So the incontinent cutaneous divergence using pure ileum, you have the cox pouch or the double T pouch. The ileocolonic CCD pouches are mains one, the Indiana pouch and the pen pouch. The ileal new bladders are Gonim, Hotman, Studer and the VIP pouch and finally the mains 3 is the ileocolonic new bladder. So I am going to summarize the mains pouches that may be asked in your MCQ exams. 
so the mains one pouch was a ccd continent cutaneous diversion which was created using the ileal and the cecal segments the mains two is actually a rectal bladder or the rectosigmoid bladder rectal bladder and the mains three is a colonic ileocolonic ileocolonic neo bladder okay so don't confuse it try to remember mains one was the original mains one was a continent cutaneous diversion the mains two was a uh, rectal bladder or uh, modification of the ureterosigmoidostomy and the mains three was a ileocolonic neo bladder okay you have created a neo bladder what are the important things that you keep in mind so we have created suppose this is the neo bladder that we have created we have attached it to the urethra the native urethra so this was the neo bladder we have attached it to the native urethra there are a few things that we do the ureters have been de-implanted here okay so surgeons try to divert this urine away from the cavity of the neo bladder by placing splints that are taken out into the abdomen from the abdomen temporarily these are called as ureteral splints you to used to divert the urine away from the new bladder temporarily and they place a large bore urethral catheter foley's catheter so you try to drain the urine from the new bladder which may be done with the help of splints the first second is that they may stent the anastomosis with the help of ureteral stents double j stents may be placed instead of these ureteral splints and so these are stents and finally you place a urethral catheter which is third is catheter some individuals also prefer to place a suprapubic catheter in these individuals which comes out of the abdomen so four things can be done either one or two are done and three or four may be done together or in or separately as well so these are how you drain the new bladder you are doing a new bladder there are bound to be complications which are classified as early as well as late complications the early complications of radical cystectomy include bleeding thromboembolic complications and wound infections or systemic infections there may be pulmonary or cardiovascular complications and in addition to this patient may have gastrointestinal complications such as leak of the intestinal anastomosis or mechanical bowel obstruction and finally there may be leak of urine from the ureteroenteric anastomosis from the condu or reservoir itself and finally there are late complications such as voiding problems metabolic complications recurrent urinary tract infections bowel obstruction ureteroileal or afferent limb obstruction urethral stricture pouch stone pouch rupture vaginal fistulae now we are going to come to two important mcqs where i want you to keep your minds open try to think try to analyze and then answer a 70 year old man who is 10 days status post cystectomy and neo bladder is readmitted with fever and a ct was done which shows a large fluid collection near the reservoir that fills with contrast on delayed images the catheter and ureteral stents are still in place what is the next step so first of all i want you to understand the question so the patient has undergone cystectomy and a new bladder was done he was discharged and he has come back on day 10 with fever we did a ct scan which shows that there is a large fluid collection near the reservoir that fills with contrast so this finding that they are trying to tell you is contrast on delayed images means that this is urine when you take delayed images that is 3 minutes after giving iv contrast this urine via the ureters will reach the new bladder and it is leaking so they are what they are trying to say is that this patient has leak from the new bladder and has come to with fever and this leakage has produced a large fluid collection next to the reservoir now they are telling you that the patient has a urethral catheter and ureteral stents are in place that means that the urine is completely the new bladder is diverted so what are the next step to be done in this patient the first option is iv antibiotics and observe with frequent catheter irrigation the second option is explore and repair the pouch the third option is bilateral percutaneous nephrostomy placement the fourth option is percutaneous drainage of fluid collection 
and the fourth option is percutaneous placement of a suprapubic catheter so now what i want you to remember from this question is a step up approach for management of such patients so first of all you must remember that the catheter is in the bladder it is draining the urine stents are there they are splinting the ureteroentric anastomosis this patient only has fever and has a fluid collection and the patient is having fever because this fluid collection has urine and is infected so in these individuals the first step should be iv antibiotics but along with that you have to drain this collection so the actual first option should be iv antibiotic plus drainage of fluid collection which nowadays is done percutaneously okay suppose this patient did not have a urethral catheter so the first step would be iv antibiotic drainage of fluid and placement of urethral catheter you want that the new bladder should not distend and to ensure that the new bladder is decompressed you need to drain it so you will put a urethral catheter if it was not already present so this patient had a large fluid collection but catheter was in c2 and stents were there so what you will do is you will do iv antibiotics and drain the fluid and place a urethral catheter if it was not there suppose this patient continues to leak in this percutaneous drain continues to be septic in those cases the next step would be an attempt to divert the urine away from the new bladder by the help of placement of a per bilateral percutaneous nephrostomies They, what they will do is that they will divert the urine from the level of the kidney itself no urine will reach no or minimal urine will reach into the new bladder and this will give body the time it requires to heal the third option is this patient continues to leak that means that the perforation in the or the the rent in the new bladder is quite large enough in those cases you may need to op go and perform an open repair so this is how you will step up your approach first is you will place a urethral catheter if it is not there if the urethral catheter was in place you will start iv antibiotics and drain this fluid collection if the patient continues to leak despite placement of this percutaneous drainage tube continues to be septic you will divert the urines from the level of the kidney itself by placement of bilateral nephrostomies and if the patient does not respond is very septic you may need to formally repair it again the next question is a 53 year old woman has an anterior excentration and a new bladder with an omental flap interposition 3 months previously so 3 months ago she underwent anterior pelvic excentration and a new bladder with omental flap she still has total incontinence in the day and night time the next step is first is you reassure and reinforce kegel exercises second is you refer to physical therapy for pelvic floor strengthening exercises the third option was to evaluate for the possibility of a vesico vaginal fistula the third is uh, the fourth option is prescribe extended release oxybutynin and the fifth option is fluoro urodynamics let let's try to understand what they are trying to tell you in this question so first of all an important thing that you must remember about a new bladder is that when a catheter is removed from the new bladder it is usually after a period of 2 to 3 weeks okay so the first removal of catheter in a new bladder is done after a period of 14 to 21 days to allow for healing of the new bladder as there is a lot of suturing that is done so 2 to 3 weeks the catheter is removed and following this the patient is uh, expected to be incontinent and this slowly regain this continence over a period of 1 year so at this time this individual who is continuously leaking urine at 3 months is actually assumed to be physiologically incontinent which is expected in the post operative period but this question is specifically trying to test the clinician whether he has expected or anticipated an expected complication so the first option is reassurance and reinforce kegel exercises 
they are trying to say that you tell the patient incontinence is likely to happen it is assumed it is expected and what you need to do is you need to exercise your pelvic floor muscles and this continence is going to return which is correct to some extent the second is refer to physical therapy for pelvic floor strengthening which is the same thing that they are trying to say the fourth option is they are trying to say that the prescribing extended release the third option here is prescribe extended release oxybutynin and in this they are trying to you will prescribe oxybutynin for overactive bladder so you might be thinking or you they are forcing you to think oh this patient is having overactive bladder which is usually not the case with new bladders as they do not have that uh, the overactivity and finally they are trying to ask fluorourodynamics which is not actually going to help you much they are trying to tell that you look for other causes of incontinence the thing that they are trying to ask and evaluate is for the possibility of vesicovaginal fistula and the statement that they said is that a patient a female patient who is totally incontinent day and night in the early post operative period should be evaluated to rule out the possibility of a vesicovaginal fistula very important because this complication if present has to be managed as soon as possible